In section 1.4, we're going to combine ideas of 1.1 and 1.2 in solving a linear system and the idea of a vector equation that we introduced in 1.3 to solve the matrix equation AX equals B. We're going, to, we're going to continue talking about linear combinations and we're going to view that linear combination as a matrix vector multiplication. There's going to be a couple different ways we're going to do this multiplication and we're, we're going to introduce them both in this section. So first we have if A is an M by N matrix, remembering that M by N matrix means that we have M rows and N columns. M by N, M rows, N columns. We have the columns A1 to AN, those are vectors. We can see the bold face, they're vectors. And if X is a vector in RN, that means that there's N real numbers, then the product of A and X, denoted A times X, is the linear combination of the columns of A using the corresponding entries in X as weights. So we can see that AX is going to be, if we, if we rewrite A as the columns being those vectors A1 to AN times that matrix X1 to XN, that vector, then this is going to be a linear combination, X1A1 plus X2A2 all the way to XNAN. Again, we're thinking about linear combinations and matrix vector multiplication as the same thing. So let's see this as an example. We have this three by two matrix, three rows, two columns, and this two by one matrix, or a vector, and we're gonna multiply those together. We see that seven is like our X1 here, and minus six is our X2. Our first column is A1, and our second column is A2. This is our idea of X1A1 plus X2A2. If we multiply a vector by a scalar, we just multiply each part of it by that scalar. So this would give us 7, 21, 0, and 24 minus 12 minus 30. We can add those together and get 31, 9, negative 30. Again, we've already been through linear combinations. We're just going to see this as another way to think about matrix vector multiplication. Example two, we're gonna write down the system of equations corresponding to this augmented matrix, and then express the system of equations in vector form, and finally, in the matrix form, AX equals B, where B is gonna be a two by one vector that is a vector in R2. And I guess we should say that X is going to be a three by one vector. X is going to be the vector X1, X2, X3. So we have our vector equation and really what's going on here is I didn't draw it in, but we have, this is an augmented matrix. It means that last part is going to be our vector B our equal sign is that line. So rewriting this matrix as a corresponding system of equations, we have 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 4x3 equals 9, and negative 3x1 plus x2 plus 0x3, even though we don't have to write that, is equal to negative 2. We can write that as a vector equation. This is what we did in 1.3. We can think about this as x1 times the vector 2, negative 3, plus x2 times the vector 3, 1, plus x3 times the vector 4, 0. Those coefficients coming from the thing that's multiplied by the corresponding variable. all equaling 9, negative 2, which is going to be our vector B at the end. So the matrix equation is going to be a matrix times X equals B, and the matrix is going to be 
2, negative 3, 3, 1, 4, 0. Those are the columns of A times x, which is our x1, x2, x3 vector, is going to be equal to b, which is 9, negative 2. And that is our matrix equation, ax equals b. There's going to be three equivalent ways or we're going to view a linear system. We can think about it as a system of linear equations, as a vector equation, as we saw in the previous example, or as a matrix equation, ax equals b. Going back to the previous page for a second, that's our three solutions here that we have for this example. We have a system of linear equations, our vector equation, and our matrix equation. Saying this formally is our theorem. If A is an M by N matrix, M rows, N columns, with those columns denoted A1 to AN as vectors, and if B is a vector in RM, then the matrix equation AX equals B has the same solution set as the vector equation X1A1 plus X2A2 all the way to XNAN equals B. So we can think about these things equivalently, whichever one suits our needs the best. And a useful fact, the equation AX equals B has a solution if and only if B is a linear combination of the columns of A. So let's look at another example. Let's let A be this 3 by 3 matrix, and B is going to be an arbitrary matrix, or arbitrary vector in R3. All right, B1, B2, B3 can be any real number. That's what it means to be an arbitrary vector in R3. And the question we have is, is the equation AX equals B consistent for all B? That means that there is a solution regardless of what I choose for B1, B2, and B3. To do this, we're going to look at the augmented matrix corresponding to AX equals B. Remember, the equal sign is that line. We have the arbitrary vector B on the right-hand side and the matrix A on the left-hand side of that equal sign. If I would row reduce this matrix, our first row reductions would be 3 row 1 plus row 2 into row 2 to get rid of that negative 3. We would also have a negative 2 row 1 plus row 3 into row 3 to get rid of that 2 or make it a 0. And we could continue going through that process. We would get this in row echelon form, this matrix. And we can see that at this point, we don't have to get it to uh, reduce echelon form, just echelon form to see that this is not going to be consistent because of this last row. Because there are some choices of B that make negative 2B1 plus B3 equals 0. Uh, for example, most choices will do that. How about B1 equals 1 and B3 equals B3 equals 0? In that case, you would have negative 2 times 1 plus 0 is negative 2, and you would have an inconsistent system because you would have a 0 equals negative 2 in that last row. And that would be a problem. So there's some choices. So therefore, it's not consistent for all B. There are some Bs where that is consistent. So for instance, B1 and B3 equal to 0. But that's not what the question's asking for. If we go back to the original matrix, we have our matrix A. We have the columns are represented by vectors A1, A2, A3. 
we know that the equation ax equals b is consistent if negative 2b1 plus b3 equals 0 sorry if negative 2b1 plus b3 equals 0 and this is an equation of a plane in R3 you can learn about what the equation of a plane is in a calc 3 course if you haven't got to that point yet you can just believe me this is an equation of a plane it's a linear equation in R3 space we're going to look at that plane in just a little bit here. So looking at this plane, we have again this linear combination x1a1 plus x2a2 plus x3a3 equals b if and only if b3 minus 2b1 equals 0, which is the equation of a plane. We can also think about the span of the three vectors a1, a2, a3. And if you play around with these vectors for a little bit, you may notice that a3 is just a1 plus a2. If you take the first entries of a1 and a2, and the second entries of a1 and a2, and the third, they add up and they give you the entries of a3. So this means that the span of a1, a2, a3 is really just the span of a1 and a2. a3 is already in that span. You don't need to consider it. We talked in the last um, section that if you can rewrite everything in terms of a1 and a2, so for instance, this equation, x1, a1, x2, a2, x3, a3 equals b, you could rewrite as x1, a1 plus x2, a2 plus x3, and you don't even need to consider a3, you could just write this as a1 plus a2 equals b. And all of a sudden now this is a linear combination of stuff with only two vectors, a1 and a2. So we can think about the span of a1 and a2, and we saw in the last section that this is going to be a plane in R3 because A1 and A2 are not multiples of each other. You can verify that on your own very quickly. So we said that this was not consistent for all choices of B, but any choice of B that lands on that plane, so maybe like this vector right here, will be consistent in that solution, in that system. Anything outside of that plane will not. So instead, in that last example, if any B, if any B made that consistent, any B in R3, not just the ones lying on the particular line or plane, can be expressed as a linear combination of the columns of A, then we say that the columns of A span R3. So we kind of think about it, we have, we're thinking about R3 in 3 space. We could have uh, the span of vectors could be a line, if it's the span of one vector, a plane, if it's the span of two vectors that aren't multiples of each other, or all of R3, if those three vectors aren't multiples of each other and can't be written as linear combinations of each other. If we're thinking about two space, then we're thinking about a line and a plane. And we saw in the last section, we saw a example where two vectors actually span the entire two space, R2, a plane. Let's write that as a definition. We say that the columns of A, A1, A2, all the way to AP, span RM if every vector B in RM is a linear combination of A1 to AP. Also said the span of A1 to AP is equal to RM. Okay, so we're just giving a definition to the columns of A spanning RM.
So now we're going to get to a very important theorem here, which is going to relate a lot of the ideas that we've already talked about together. And it may seem like we're repeating ourselves a whole lot, but that's because we're seeing how to view this one singular question and use it or look at it in a multiple different ways. And that's what this theorem is going to talk about is if we have an M by N matrix, the following statements are logically equivalent. These are all the same thing. And this is a very nice theorem because depending on the situation, you can use any one of these to answer the question. And we'll see that the last one's going to be really important because it's very easy to do in many problems. So all these things are the same. A, for each B and RM, the equation AX equals B has a solution. That's kind of like what we were just talking about in the last example, that you know, regardless of what I choose for B, it has a solution. That's the exact same thing as saying each B in RM is a linear combination of the columns of A. Again, that's what we looked at in the last example, that relationship. Both of those are the same thing as saying the columns of A span RM. That's that last remark that we looked at. And bringing it all together, this is the same thing as saying A has a pivot position in every row. Thinking that A, again, is the coefficient matrix... has a pivot position in every row. So when I'm thinking about linear combinations, I'm thinking about span, I'm thinking about vector and matrix equations, I can go back to things that we learned in 1.1 and 1.2 and answer a question just looking at the pivot positions in the row by row reducing some matrix. We're going to look at a quick little proof outline of this theorem. So I said that we've seen some reasons why A, B, and C are logically equivalent in this section and talked about why that's true. Uh, but that's not a proof, but we see maybe some reasons why. So to complete the proof, we're going to show that A and D are logically equivalent. That is, when A is true, D is true, and when A is false, D is false. So first we're going to suppose that D is true and show that A is true. We're going to row reduce the augmented matrix A, B. We can do this with some row operations. We're going to get down to a new matrix U and a matrix D, or a vector D on the right-hand side. And since D is true, each row of U has a pivot position. And so there is no pivot in the last column of U, D. The reason that that is true is because there can only be one pivot in every row, and since every row already has a pivot, there can be no extra pivot in the last column in that D. That means that the system is consistent. You can't have something like 0, 0, 0, and then some number C that's non-zero because that would be a pivot. And since we have that, the system is consistent, and therefore A is true, because that equation has a solution. We're going to go backwards now. Let's say that D is false, that there's not a pivot in every row. Then the last row of U contains all zeros, or at least we could flip the rows, interchange the rows, so that the last one contains all zeros. Now let's let D be a vector with 1 as the last entry. Again, what we're talking about is we want, to be, we want this to be true for all B. That's going to um, correlate to being all vectors D as well. So we're going to just choose one so it doesn't have a 0 in the last entry. It has a 1 as the last entry. Then UD represents an inconsistent system because we then have a row of zeros and a 1 as that last entry. And since 0 does not equal 1, this is an inconsistent system. And since row operations are going to be reversible, we can go backwards those row operations to get A, B. And since those row operations uh, maintain the solution of the system, then we have that the original system A, B is inconsistent, and therefore A is also false.
This is a quick outline of the proof just for that last little step, A and D being logically equivalent. And we've seen some reasons why the other ones are logically equivalent to those as well. So let's look at another example. We have A is a 3 by 2 matrix, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and B is an arbitrary vector B, B1, B2, B3. The question here is, is the equation AX equals B consistent for all possible vectors B, regardless of my choice of B1, B2, B3? Now this question is very quick based on that last theorem. We're going to use just part D of the last theorem. That is that if this is going to be consistent, then we have that all rows much, must have a pivot. But since A only has two columns, there can only be at most two pivots. If you're thinking about row reducing this, maybe you have a pivot in those first two columns, but you can't have two pivots in one column, so therefore you only have two pivots. So therefore, since A does not have a pivot in every row, AX equals B is not solvable. It is not consistent for all possible B, again, according to that previous theorem. The theorem is nice because we can look at an, uh, a problem that has to do with just a matrix equation and just go back to thinking about pivots and 1.1 and 1.2 material. All right, next example. Do the columns of A, given by a 3 by 3 matrix, span R3? If we go back to that last theorem, that's another part of our theorem that says that if we're thinking about do the columns of A span R3, we are talking about does the matrix equation, is that consistent for all B? We can think about it as linear combinations or we can think about it as pivots in the matrix A. And that's how we're going to think about this here. We're going to look at our matrix A, and we're going to row reduce that to see where our pivots are going to be. We want to get a 0 in this spot right here, so that row operation will be negative 2, row 1, plus row 2, into row 2. This will give us the matrix 1, 2, 3, 0, minus 2 times 2 is 4, plus 4 is 0, minus 2 times 2 is negative 4, plus 4 is 0, minus 2 times 3 is minus 6, plus 6 is 0, and we'll leave this guy unchanged. And then if you want, you could swap row 2 and row 3 to get something in echelon form and we can see that in this matrix that we do not have a pivot in every row our pivots are right here there's no pivot in that last row so therefore by the previous theorem the columns of A do not span R3. Okay, that also means that AX equals B does not have a solution for all choices of B. That means that we cannot write B as a linear combination of the columns of A. All of those things are equivalent. All right, the last thing in this section is we're going to look at an alternate way of computing AX, this matrix vector multiplication. So we're going to look at this example, A, which is a 3 by 3 matrix, and X, which is going to be X1, X2, X3, our vector. And we're going to look at it from the definition, from the very first thing we did in this section. In the first thing in this section, we are going to look at this, look at this as a linear combination of vectors of the columns of A.
x1 plus the first column, a1, x2 plus the second column, a2, and x3 times the third column, a3. And if we multiply all those together, we get this three vectors, 2x1, negative x1, 6x1, 3x2, 5x2, negative 2x2, and 4x3 minus 3x3, 8x3. And if you add all those together, we get a system of linear equations given by this vector. All right, this is a 3 by 1 vector. It's a vector in R3. An alternate way of doing that would be to look at this matrix multiplication kind of thing. And we're going to introduce this matrix multiplication when we get past just vectors. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the first entry of AX of the product is going to be a sum of the products using the first row of A and the entries of X. This is going to be like a dot product kind of product as you might see in a Calc 3 course or at the end of a Calc 2 course depending on where you take that class. So here we're going to multiply the 2 times the x1, the 3 times the x2, and the 4 times the x3 to get 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 4x3. Then you're going to repeat that for each row of A. So the second entry is corresponding to the second row of A, and again you take negative 1 times the x1, that gives negative x1, plus 5x2, 5x2, minus 3x3 gives you a minus 3x3. And finally, you do it for the third row as well, 6x1, minus 2x2, plus 8x3. And that gives you the same 3 by 1 matrix that we had before using just from the definition. It is an alternate way of thinking about that multiplication. And it's good to do some practice with that. So here's a couple practice problems with that matrix vector multiplication. In this first one you have a 2 by 3 matrix and this is going to be a 3 by 1 matrix we're going to multiply by and again you're going to take the first row times that column will give you that first entry. 1 times 4 plus 2 times 3 minus 1 times 7 would give you 3. And then you take the second row of that first matrix times that column and you get 0 times 4 minus 5 times 3 plus 3 times 7 is 6. In the next example we have a 3 by 2 times a 2 by 1. It is important and we'll see this later on that these numbers have to match up in order to think about it this way. Actually, that always has to match up, but it's really clear in this that those numbers have to match up. So here we have first row, 2, negative 3 times the column. 2 times 4 minus 3 times 7 is negative 13. Second row times the column, 8 times 4 plus 0 times 7 is 32. And the third row, negative 5 times 2, or negative 5, 2 times 4 times 7 is negative 5 times 4, 2 times 7 is negative 6. Lastly, we have a 3 by 3 and a 3 by 1 matrix. And we'll see that those last, those inner digits do match each other. And we have 1, 0, 0, R, S, T. We have 1 times R plus 0 times S times 0 times T is R. 0, 1, 0, R, S, T. 0 times R plus 1 times S times 0 times T is S. And finally, 0, 0, 1, R, S, T would give you T. And you can see that when you take uh, this matrix times R, S, T, you get just R, S, T at the end. And this is something special. And this matrix is called the identity matrix. And it is a very special matrix that we're going to talk a lot about. But there's something special about having just ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. This is three pivot positions, all in the diagonal. This is in triangular form, but also in row reduced echelon form.
And when you take that and you multiply by any vector, you just get the vector back. Lastly, a couple of different things about matrix vector multiplication. If A is a matrix, U and V are vectors, and C is a scalar, then you can have A times U plus V is the same thing as just taking AU plus AV. This is a natural thing that you may want to do, and this theorem tells you that you can do that with no problems. Same thing if you have a scalar times a vector, you can bring that scalar out in front. These are two different kind of theorems that you have seen a lot in calculus courses especially. You think about bringing uh, scalars out in front for limits and derivatives and integrals, and same thing with addition. It's the same idea here with matrix vector multiplication.